Again, good afternoon and thank you for joining the Grain Farmers of Ontario Grain Grading uh, webinar. We uh, appreciate you uh, joining us this afternoon, especially on, uh, on a, a hot, uh, hot sunny day that it is. So today's webinar is going to focus in on uh, grading factors uh, for corn, soybeans and wheat. And for those of you that have not heard of uh, Grain Talk, um, this is Grain Farmers of Ontario's new communication tool that we're using to uh, get inf information out to you, the farmer members. Um, under Grain Talk, you'll find that um, we, we have a number of different communication tools that we'll be using. So um, we have um, podcasts that we're doing that are touching on a number of uh, relevant topics. There's our e-newsletter that goes out each week um, that just provides a highlight of the activities that have gone on. Um, we have webinars such as the one that we're hosting today, as well as market trend reports. So if you'd like more information on that, we encourage you to visit the website. So that's gfo.ca slash grain talk. And now we're going to uh, move into today's presentation. So it is my pleasure to introduce Jessica McClure. Jessica is a graduate of the University of Guelph with a Bachelor in Science in Agriculture. She's been working in the grain quality assurance uh, for six years, and the last two have been with SGS Canada. Uh, and Jessica is a certified grain inspector. And for those of you that have not heard of SGS Canada before, they are a third party inspection company that offers grain grading and other various tests of grain. And if you'd like more information on the grain testing services that they have to offer, we encourage you to contact SGS Canada here in Hensel. And so I'm gonna hand it over to Jessica to, to start today's presentation. Hey everyone, um, it's good to be here. So this webinar is for training purposes only and the Canadian Grain Guide must be followed for official references always. Grading is a rapid visual assessment to determine the quality of the grain and the grain the grade reflects the price of grain and can also determine if segregation of a load is needed at the elevator. Proper sampling is key to ensuring that the sample collected is representative of the load of grain. And the different types of sampling are dipping, which is a complete swath through the grain stream, such as a pelican. Hand probing is when the probe is inserted into a tote, bag, or truck until it reaches the bottom, and then the sample is pulled out and pneumatic probing, which is an automatic sampler that uses a vacuum system to collect samples, which is what most truck probes are now. The CGC recommends that trucks are probed a minimum of eight times for a single truck and a minimum of 10 for hopper trailers. This is not practical in the elevator setting and generally one probe per hopper or four per truck are taken at random. CGC recommends that manual sampling during unloading samples is taken from both outside spots and from the middle to get a representative sample. Dividing samples with the appropriate device is necessary to maintain the representation of the sample while it is being broken down into a workable size. If dividing isn't done, the sample will no longer be accurate and will skew the proper grade of the sample. So the grading area should be set up with all of the testing equipment that is required, such as a scale, moisture meter, test weight funnel, and the wall should be a neutral color to prevent the appearance of an off-colored grain. And the grading area should be clean and tidy to prevent contamination of samples from previous loads. It is also recommended that there are two banks of lights in the grading area. Moisture is tested by either Unified Grain Moisture Algorithm, which the Perton 5200 uses, or by Near Infrared Testing, which is the technology that the 919 meters have. The test weight is measure measured by putting approximately 700 grams of grain into a Cox funnel and pulling the slide from the bottom of the funnel over a 0.5 liter cup. The striker is then ran over the edge of the cup in a W pattern and the excess grain is pushed off of the top. The grain left in the cup is weighed and then converted to kilograms per hectoliter with the CGC chart. The test weight is to be done on clean samples except for corn unless specified in the delivery contract. Wet corn generally has a lower test weight compared to when it is dried, so a conversion is necessary to get the proper test weight. Corn material is any matter that isn't the grain being graded. Some examples of this are ergot, sclerotia, excreta, weed seed stones, and other grains. Three contaminations that are not acceptable are treated seed, glass, and fertilizer. 
Treat seed is not acceptable as it is toxic. Glass isn't because it can't be cleaned out of the grain easily and it can potentially shatter in the process of trying to clean it out. And if there's less than 1% fertilizer, it is considered stones and over that is a contamination. The odor of the grain should be a natural odor. And if there is an off odor, the grain can be downgraded or rejected by the elevator depending on the severity of it. So go into wheat. Wheat dockage is assessed as a material that falls through a number five buckwheat sieve and unthreshed wheat heads and material that pass over a number 25 riddle and the material that's removed from the aspiration. One of the main issues that we may face this year due to the high amounts of rain that we've received is fusarium and as a result of that higher bomb levels. So Vicerium is a shrunken chalk-like kernel that has either white or pink mold in the crease. The vomitoxin is associated with Fusarium. So if there's an abundance of Fusarium in the sample, then the vomitoxin levels will be high. The other main issue that we may, might have this year due to rain is sprouting. White wheat is more prone to sprouting compared to other classes of wheat. However, all classes are capable of sprouting in the right conditions. Sprouts are characterized as having a clear sign of growth in the germ area. That means that there is at least a prominent split in the bran and a tail is starting to form. Sprouts are associated with falling number as the test measures the amount of alpha amylase enzyme activity. When a wheat kernel begins to sprout, it starts to produce alpha amylase. A large part of the wheat kernel is made up of starch and alpha amylase breaks down the starch molecules and converts them to sugars, which causes bread dough to be sticky and difficult to slice. The falling number system works as follows. A sample of grain is ground, mixed with water and placed in a tube, which is then heated in boiling water. The thickness of the mixture is then measured by how long it takes a plunger to sink through the ground grain water mixture. The test takes about seven to 10 minutes. Common bunt is a fungal disease characterized by bunt balls, tag kernels, and a smutty odor similar to rotten fish. These samples can be downgraded to a sample grade based off of the bunt odor. The spores that are in the grain are considered for material, and the tagging goes against the degree of soundness, so the color of the grain. Mildew is another field fungus that is characterized as a grayish discoloration at the brush end of the kernel. Mildew is assessed as the degree of soundness, and it can be downgraded if severe enough. Go into soybeans. Soybean dockage is any matter that falls through an eight round and any stems, pods, loose soybean coats, and coarse vegetable material. The overall color of a soybean sample is evaluated to determine if there's too much adhered soil, green hues, or staining on the beans. The CGC provides color standards for each grade that show the maximum amount of discoloration that's allowed for each grade. So the standard that's on the screen is the minimum, is the maximum amount of staining for a soybean number one. So soybean splits are any beans that have fallen apart or any broken beans that are three quarters or less. Generally, this is determined using a slotted sieve or by hand picking the splits out of the sample. Damaged soybeans are any sprouts, frost damage, shriveled, ground damage, insect damage, immature or unsound. The soybeans that appear to have internal damage should be cut to confirm. The maximum allowed damage for a number one is 2% and the maximum for a number two is 3%. Heated beans occur in storage and are a light to dark brown color when cut. Moldy beans are wrinkled and misshapen and are a medium to dark brown color with a grayish mold on the seed coat. They are usually spongy and have an unpleasant odor. Number one, soybeans are not allowed to have any heated. And in number twos, you're allowed up to 0.2%. Rancid soybeans are a pink discoloration on the seed coat, as well as the inside of the bean. If the pink discoloration is just below the seed coat, it is graded against the overall color. If the pink is in the bean, but not through entirely, it is considered damage. 
And if the pink discoloration is through the entire bean, it is classified as heated. Move into corn. So cracked corn and foreign material is the equivalent to dockage and is assessed by using a 12 round for moistures less than 25% or 14 round for moistures above 25%. And the CCFM is all of the material that falls through the sieve, as well as any foreign material, including pieces of cobs. Stones are not counted in CCFM. They have their own category since the stones damage the equipment during the corn milling process. Damaged kernels are whole or pieces that are affected by mold, sprouts, ground damage, weathered, diseased, frosted, and heated. Most elevators don't pick damage unless there is a large amount in the sample. 5% is the maximum allowed in a number two, and 7% is the maximum for a number three. Heated kernels have an amber to dark brown color on the entire kernel, or if it's caused by the dryer, it, the germ is puffed and the germ is an amber to dark brown color. So 0.2% is the maximum amount of heated allowed in a number two, and 0.5 is the maximum for a number three. Vomitoxin doesn't always have a visual indication in corn, but gibberella is a fungal disease that is associated with vom. And gibberella is a red to pink mold that starts to form at the tip of the ear and is similar to Bucerium in wheat. All right, so thank you very much to Jessica for, for going over all of uh, all of that. Um, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, uh, you, just to use the chat function over here on the right-hand side of uh, of your screen. Um, we have had a, a few questions that have that have come through, but uh, if you have any more, feel free to, to keep uh, sending them through and, and uh, we've got lots of time that we can, uh, we can answer um, all of them. So, the first question that's come through is uh, regarding wheat harvest and with uh, wheat harvest right around the corner, I'm just wondering what the biggest factors are that would downgrade a load from a grade two to a grade three. And visually, what are some things that um, a farmer could be looking for uh, in their sample to be able to have a, you know, a better idea of, of potentially could their sample be going a grade two or a grade three? So, the biggest factors would be fusarium, sprouts, and potentially mildew if it's severe enough. So if you can see any pink heads in the field, then there's most likely a presence of fusarium. And if there has been substantial rain around harvest, sprouts may begin to form as well as mildew. Perfect. We've got another other question that has come in here too around um, uh, mold in soybeans. So um, I know uh, obviously given given the pretty wet fall that we had uh, last year, mold was uh, an issue for uh, some farmers. Um, and so just wondering um, if you can touch on um, just, you know, the, the grading factors around mold and, and what uh, what uh, uh, can kind of cause uh, cause and happen with that. So if the mold had been classified as heated, your beans would have been downgraded to at least a two. And if it wasn't, it would go against damage. So if they're IPs, then usually it, when they're processed, they can get cleaned out. But if they're not, then the elevator will have to downgrade for that. And that kind of actually ties into a, another question that we've got here, just um, in regards to IP soybeans. So um, just uh, the question was, um, you know, I'm growing IP soybeans and are there different factors for IP soybeans versus commodity soybeans? So the big thing for IP soybeans is color. So if there's mud tagging, weed seed stains or diseases that cause discoloration, then those are big issues with IPs. So if the color doesn't meet the specs of the elevator, they will most likely downgrade to non-GMO or crushers if this staining is severe enough. Perfect, so we've got a couple more questions here, but if, if anybody else has any questions, uh, please feel free again to use the chat function just on the right-hand side of, uh, of your computer. Um, so going back to uh, wheat, um, it was mentioned that fusarium may be a problem this year with this year's wheat harvest, um, just because of the cool, wet spring that we have had. Um, and it was mentioned that you should look for um, shrunken kernels that really have either a white or a pink crease on them. 
what is um, sort of the volume that is accepted in a grade two versus a grade three? And what percentage of the sample would need to be infected in order to be downgraded to a grade three? So there's different tolerances for white wheat and red wheat. For white wheat, anything over 1% automatically gets downgraded to a grade four. And then from there, it can get downgraded to a sample. And then for red wheat, you're allowed 5% to downgrade to a, anything over 5% will be downgraded to a three. And if it's over 1% is a three, sorry. And 1.5 will downgrade it to a four. Perfect. And then um, just because we're, we're kind of talking about uh, about um, uh, diseases, um, you mentioned as well that um, obviously we had a, a quite a big uh, challenge uh, in, in the fall with vomitoxin in uh, corn. You touched on on some of the um, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, characteristics or, or things to look for regarding vomitoxin. Um, just wondering though, is vomitoxin in corn an official grading factor? So vomitoxin isn't an official grading factor, but since it is a toxin, elevators generally and consumers don't want that in their product. So the elevators set their own cutoff for vom, and if it exceeds that, then they generally apply a discount. Perfect. And then the last question that we've had um, uh, come through here is um, just in regards to um, the way slips that you receive at the elevator, um, just wanting to, to make sure how, how can I understand the information that is included on them and what does it mean? Um, for instance, if it says grade two dockage 0 0.5, what does this really mean? So the grade two would mean that the stance specs have been met and then the 0.5 dockage means that that's the percentage of the material that isn't grain that was removed from the sample. And then there will be, that will be deducted from the load at the end. All right, and we've got, yeah, we've got some more questions coming in here, which is great. So keep them coming if you do, if you do have any questions. So just a question here about um, what options does a farmer have to contest a grade from an elevator? So, to contest a grade, you can ask the elevator for the sample that they grade it. And if you want a different opinion, you can always bring it to us and we can grade it and make sure that it is what you think it is. And then the elevator generally will do a second grade if you do contest. All right, that's that's all the questions that we have so far, but we'll we'll leave it here just for uh, maybe a few more a few more seconds if you've got any. Um, sort of last questions that you'd, you'd like to have answered, uh, feel free to, to send them through and, and uh, we can ask them. So it doesn't look like anything uh, anything else has uh, come through. So uh, we want to thank you very much for joining us today for our grain grading webinar. As we mentioned earlier, this webinar um, has been recorded and it will be available on GFO's YouTube channel uh, starting uh, next week. Oh, and we've I apologize, we have had one another question come uh, uh, through here. So uh, it mentions uh, if you send a load by truck and you are not uh, there to contest, what, uh, what are some of the options that uh, a farmer could do? So the elevator should keep a retained sample of anything that they downgrade. So you can ask them to send it off on your behalf and have it checked. The only thing with that is if the sample wasn't properly divide it, then the sample is skewed most likely in their favor. So um, I, I know uh, uh, to uh, just uh, another question that's uh, come up here is um, just uh, around um, how, how do you get grain graded? Um, so um, for instance, if, it, if you, know, you were interested in having a, an understanding of what the quality of your, or your crop was looking for, what's kind of the a procedure that you would need to do in order to get that grain graded so you've got an idea on the quality? So you can either go to your elevator and check, sometimes they will do that for you, but we're always here if, anybody wants to come and get their grain tested, we can grade basically any grain and it's a fairly quick procedure. We usually have the results out the next day. And is there a minimum sample size that would be required for that? 
We prefer to have a KG just to make sure we have enough that if you did have a question later, we can go back and double check with the retained sample. Perfect. I'll, uh, I'll just maybe give it just a couple more seconds there. I, I didn't mean to, to, to cut off. We had a, just a couple of questions that had come through there. So we'll maybe just give it a, a few more seconds just in case anyone else does have a, have a question they'd like to, uh, like to ask and uh, we, can, we can get it answered. So it seems like I don't think we, we see anything coming through here. We'll just maybe wait a, a few more seconds in case anybody's just in the middle of typing their question there. Um, and, then, uh, and then we can wrap it up for today. We don't see anything uh, anything coming through here. Um, so again, we just want to say thank you. Oh, I apologize. We do have one that's just come through. Um, so it says here, with all of the core and Dawn problems that we had this, this past fall, uh, why were the testing results so inconsistent? That comes down to the sample that was tested. If the sample wasn't divided and they just took a scoop off the top, there will be differences with that. And then since the particles of VOM are so small, generally with you could get a different result with any scoop that you take from that sample. And since there was such so many spikes between the corn itself, it just really couldn't be consistent. But to help with that, to make sure that the sample is being properly handled. It should always be, the grinder should always be flushed between samples and then they should always make sure that their equipment is clean and that they're doing the test properly. So it does look like we've got maybe uh, another question or two that's uh, just coming through. I know uh, it uh, uh, takes a little bit to, to get it all typed in there. So we'll just, uh, we'll just hold on another minute here and uh, we'll just see if anything else, uh, anything else comes through. It doesn't look like, I don't think we've got, uh, we've got anything uh, coming through the queue here. So uh, just thank you again for, for taking the time to uh, listen in on our grain grading webinar uh, this afternoon. As we have mentioned, this, uh, this webinar will be recorded uh, or has been recorded and it will be available on our GFO YouTube channel. So if you've had to uh, step out uh, early or if there's something that uh, you'd like to go back and, and listen to, uh, please go and check that out uh, next week and it will be available for you. And thank you again for, uh, for signing on and uh, have a great rest of the day.